Hi everyone, and welcome to chapter 10 of infectious diseases. This is the first disease out of six disease, cholera. Cholera is caused by a bacteria. It is called Vibrio cholerae. Um, Vibrio means it can vibrate, it can move, it can swim, and therefore has a flagella. And what we say it can move, this term here, proper term, is called motile. It is comma shaped. That's just what it's called, the shape here. And it causes cholera, right? So large numbers of vibrio cholera are found in feces or in infected people, or have an infected person, an infected person. Species contaminates food or water. The housefly may land on those species and contaminate food and water as well. And what happens to any the person is that they eat the contaminated food and water. Now, this entire process is called the fecal oral route. So, if you put it in a sentence, cholera is spread by the fecal oral route. Now, the fecal oral route comprises both waterborne and foodborne transmission. It's all comprising in this word fecal oral route. Very important term here. Now, um, what happens though when cholera is in you? Okay, what happens when you drink or eat contaminated food or water? Now, usually the bacteria is killed by stomach acid, but some will reach the small intestine. And what the bacteria does is it secretes cholerogen toxin. And cholerogen toxin is the real bad guy here. Cholerogen toxin is the one that binds to complementary receptors and enters the cell via endocytosis. These are intestinal epithelial cells, so cells that lining your intestines. Now what it does is that the toxin will disrupt the function of the intestinal epithelium lining. The toxin will cause loss of chloride ions and sodium ions from epithelial cells, chloride and sodium as in salt. So salt is lost from epithelial cells and this salt actually ends up in your intestines. So your lumen of your intestines will have a very low water potential and therefore water moves out from blood and like tissues surrounding the intestines down the water potential by osmosis through the partially formable membranes and therefore the person who has this problem will have severe diarrhea and dehydration and if not treated soon enough then the person will die of dehydration. More symptoms include loss of salt water, weakness of fatigue, vomiting, weight loss, and blood pressure, and actually a lot more. But the most important here to remember is severe dehydration and diarrhea. And how we can identify whether a person has it or not, other than the symptoms, is the microscopical analysis of PC. So literally take poop, put it under the microscope, find vibrio cholera, and if you see it, you have it. So what do we do again when we um, identify the disease? Now we can treat it. Well, the treatment is just like the video, um, and this is called oral rehydration therapy. And the idea is to use oral rehydration solution. I think you can buy these packs now here in pharmacies. This is what your parents make you drink when, um, or doctors make you drink when you have diarrhea, right? And really, it just has um, salts and sugar which helps, which um, are measured to be isotonic to your body uh, fluid, supposed to be like, okay? This ensures that your fluid intake equals your fluid losses in urine or feces. And um, after the person drinks this, this helps maintain osmotic balance of the blood and tissue fluids, so you don't lose too much um, water over time, and this would help them survive. You know, because all the top, what causes the disease is not really the bacteria itself, but the toxin the bacteria um, secretes. The bacteria will actually be eventually washed out of the system. You just need to survive the toxin. Um, so, of course, you need to prevent this because you can you imagine if you have. Um, if you have cholera and then continue to consume food that's contaminated or water that's contaminated, that is going to get worse because there will be more bacteria inside to secrete the collagen toxin. So what you want to do is really to break the transmission cycle by ensuring proper sewage treatment to ensure proper sanitization. And um, you can even chlorinate water to kill bacteria before drinking. 
drink bottled water. So there are a few few uh, agencies sort of um, involved here. Proper sewage treatment and proper sanitization has to be um, a collective effort by the community or by the area council or by the government, right? And there's also like personal uh, measures to chlorinate water and uh, drink bottled water if necessary. Now, there are vaccinations available, but it only offers short-term protection. It is not effective and is no longer recommended. Now, we will talk about that more later on. Now, cholera um, used to be a huge problem all over the world, okay, all over the world. But now, it is only endemic in developing countries like West Africa. Uh, East Africa, I think in India, Afghanistan, Latin America, parts of Asia. Um, these places uh, are places that usually has poor sanitation and sewage treatment and have no access to clean running water. Now, epidemics also follows natural disasters or war. Okay, this is a sudden increase in cases. Now, for example, in the 2010 earthquake in Haiti, I think you were 10 probably. Now, during that time, there was a cholera epidemic then because, you know, people are displaced from their homes and water supply was all contaminated already because there was a huge, uh, there was floods and a lot of clean water supply has stopped and things like that due to um, the natural disaster. Now, in Yemen, in 2014 and 2016, very recent, there is also a civil war there. And therefore, many people were also displaced. There was no treatment of fecal waste and the water supply was contaminated, there is poor hygiene and poor living conditions, and therefore, outbreak. Ta-da! And of course, to add on that, there is a lack of education about how it's transmitted, uh, and lack of education about how to prevent it properly. Now that's global distribution. Now we're going to talk about a final thing, which is other problems that cholera would face, um, that why is it still a problem now? And why, why can't we forming a vaccine? Now that is because actually there are many different strains of vibrio cholera. Now you can see this little um, tree diagram here that shows you how many type and which, which uh, types came from what type. You don't really need to know the particular um, names. You will see these names in your textbook, but you don't need to know the names. You just need to know that there's many different strains and each strain is worse than the last. So each strain causes more severe effects, more spreading than the last one. And that's bad. And that's also bad for, the, um, for adults who have already had cholera. This means that if you had cholera before, um, after the new strain has developed, you can get the new strain of cholera again. So you can be infected. And this becomes a problem also for vaccine development because it has so many strains it's hard to vaccinate against cholera. You can vaccinate against, say, classical or LTOR, but in a few years, it's going to have a different strain, and therefore the vaccine will not be effective anymore. Therefore, it only offers short-term protection. And therefore, it is no longer recommended. It doesn't have much use against the newer strains anymore. We'll talk more about vaccination next chapter, in chapter 11, so stay tuned. But until then, um, this is about it for cholera, and I'll see you next disease, I guess. Bye!